Welcome back to my final video about my KT-88 build. As you can see, I used um, Edgar and Iron, KT-88s, and a 5 AR-4 rectifier tube. This is the power transformer. This is the 10 Henry choke. And these are the 5K single-ended output transformers going into an 8 ohm load. Got Gold Lion KT88s and we will talk about the driver tubes later. I ended up putting these little um, shields over them. The IERC shields that I cut down a little bit to fit the shorter tubes and these um, helped with the microphonics of the tubes plus they um, supposedly help keep them cooler but I do like seeing the tubes glow but it does seem to it does seem to sound better with those over the tubes I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the output tubes and set them over here so we can get a better look at the amp as you can see little decorative rings that I got off eBay. There's holes drilled here to help provide cooling for the KT-88 tubes. Like I mentioned in an earlier video, I decided to put the cathode resistors externally, and I'm really glad I did. You can, I mean, these things get pretty warm, and they, being external, they're able to cool, plus, it's real easy to put a voltmeter across the resistor to read the cathode voltage to make sure that they're where they're supposed to be. And I'll talk more about that later in probably my next video that's going to be more about details of fine-tuning this amp. I found a volume control that matched these that I think looks really nice. I did run into an issue with the um, the rectifier tube. The first one I tried was a JJ brand. And I try not to bash brands, but the JJ5 AR4s are really junk. It, it, short, it arced out and shorted within 30 minutes of firing up the amp. And I've read other people talking about having same issues with those tubes. It may be that they work fine if you're only working with 250 or 300 volts, but this amp's approaching 450 volts and 200 milliamps, and it was way more than that tube could deal with. So I went with the, uh, Genelux Gold Lion version of the 5AR4, and I've had no problems at all with it. Let me rotate the amp around a little bit. I put the RCA jacks here on the side to have a short signal path from them over to the volume control, which I'll show you when we flip the amp over. And then on the back, we have the power jack over here. The speaker leads are over here right next to the amplifiers. And I put the switch and the fuse over here on this side. So all the AC, all the 110 AC is right in this corner where the, where the transformer is. As you see, the power transformer is mounted on these. Let me see if I can get this up. These little rubber spacers. Had a problem with this Edcore power transformer humming audibly when it was bolted solid to the chassis and also had hum coming out of the ends of the bells and I put some insulating material, some butyl insulating pads on the insides of the bells and that got it down so that now when you're more than about a foot away from the amp you can't hear any of it. The other thing that I did was I've read that some concerns about steel chassis 
uh, transmitting magnetic flux from the power transformer through the chassis. And so I took a little piece of a copper clad circuit board and put it underneath the power transformer to help shield the transformer from the steel chassis. Whether or not that really helps, I don't know, but it was easy to do and gave me some peace of mind. I will say that with all the precautions I took building this amp, that it's dead silent. There's no hint of any hum. You could put your ear right up to the tweeter with the volume maxed up with no input, and it's perfectly quiet. So anyway, let me flip this over, and we'll jump after I flip it. So from this side, you can see the output transformer leads to the jacks are real short. These are the ground leads that come over to my star ground. These three tabs right here are my star ground. It's where the center tap for the transformer is connected. It's where the ground lead from this first capacitor is connected. And it's also where the, the grounds for these cathode resistors and everything goes is over here to this one point. That's very important to not end up with ground loops. The other ground points over here there's a ground point over here on each one of these that then wires into this wire that goes over to the star ground and then the same thing with this ground lead right here runs over and wires to ground points here and here on the driver tube which are where the ground for the inputs is also right here the input jacks are insulated from they're insulated from the chassis and it's a two wire twisted with a shield and each wire of the two twisted pair or the twisted pair goes to a ground and a signal comes over here to the volume control let me go ahead and turn this around see if you can see this the, it's around to the volume control the shield is grounded at this end with the negative for this for this run the shields grounded on this end not on this end same with here the shield is not grounded on this end it's grounded on this end. You do not want the shield grounded on both ends. You only want it grounded on one end and don't use the shield for the negative signal or for the ground signal. You want it to have its own wire so that you don't end up with a ground loop. As you can see I did most of the wiring for the driver tubes all off of this little four post tag strip. This is where the B plus comes over to the driver tubes. You'll see on these a lot of these leads, this white stuff. This is some uh, PTFE tubing that I got off Amazon that I cut to length, and it helps shield these open wires and makes it look a little neater too. These are the coupling caps. These are the cathode um, capacitors with bypass caps. I put bypass caps on every capacitor in the amplifier. This cap over here bypasses this. This one does this one. This one does this one. That does this one, that one does this one, this does that, and this does that. These are very small value, 0.33 UF film caps. 
that are contributing to helping the amplifier be so quiet. These two switches here, the one on this end is the ultralinear triode switch. This is a switch that allows two different values of the shade feedback or you can set it in the middle for none. And I'll talk about this later when I go into the tweaks that I did to the amplifier. So you can see the heater wires are all run here down low in the corner. They come around and I don't know if you can really see, but they're back here behind this choke. And I wanted to keep them as far away from the signal or any kind of audio as I could. And I think this obviously worked because I have I don't have any noise in this amplifier. The, the other thing that I did is this output transformer has two 6.3 volt windings. And they're each at 3 amps. And a single winding was not going to be enough to drive the heaters of both the KT88s and the two driver tubes. And so I have two separate 6.3 volt windings. They both have a virtual center tap with a 100 ohm resistor on each side of the ground, which then comes up this ground wire to the star ground. A little bit of heat shrink tubing, twisted these up fairly tight. All the wiring is 18 gauge solid core wire, which is a little bigger than some people use. Probably isn't necessary for signal wires, but I felt that using solid core wire, it allows me to shape them the way I want. I've got plenty of room, and so I didn't see any real disadvantage. The only thing that's larger is the ground for the cathode resistors. It's a uh, 14 gauge out of a solid out of a piece of Romex. To keep these heater windings tucked in the corners, I used my favorite contact cement, Plyobond, and that helps hold it here in the corner so we don't have any issues with the, them sagging or falling down. This little set of capacitors and resistors here, this is the uh, capacitor, this is the decoupling for the driver tubes from the B plus and it also helps lower the B plus down to the value that we need. I had to experiment a little bit with the value of these resistors which I put in parallel so that I could get the voltage to these driver tubes down to where they need to be. This amps running a little higher on the B plus than the design was and with the suggested values these were running almost 300 volts which is way too high so I got these down to about 200 volts I'll, I'll post all the voltages and everything in a the next video that I put together ended up putting a one and a half Henry choke underneath and I went with a 500 milliamp version so that there was low resistance, so I didn't have a lot of voltage drop out of that. And then over here, you can see the, um, the ACs all over here, here in this corner. Here's the chassis ground that's double nutted and star washered down. So we get a really good connection there to the, for the chassis ground to the earth for the power goes from the power to the fuse to the switch to the transformer and then back here to the neutral so the hot is fused then switched and then to the transformer which is the safest way to do it and that pretty much shows the underside of the layout and the build i really had a fun time building this and this has ended up being a very, very good sounding amplifier. I am going to do a second video on the tweaks that I did to it after I got it finished and walk through the tube rolling and uh, some 
values I adjusted inside the amp as far as resistors that really changed the way it sounded. So I hope you're enjoying that my video series and stay tuned for my next one, which hopefully I'll be posting in the next day or two. Thanks.